It's cold outside, so let's make something better today. This is the Shure 565SD Unisphere 1 microphone. It's a predecessor to the SM58, and I got this at Goodwill for $3. It is missing a plug, so I can't plug it into anything. So I want to replace the plug on this, but I need to do it in a special way because this has a high impedance mode and a low impedance mode setting. Low impedance is your typical way of plugging a microphone. High impedance mode is for if you're plugging your microphone into an instrument interface, pretty much anything you'd plug an electric guitar directly into. It's just kind of a different way of doing things. It's an older way of doing things. It's an interesting thing I'd like to play around with and sort of the entire point of this microphone. So that's a feature I'd like to keep, but the issue is that instead of using a standard plug, this microphone had a specialized plug you could plug these two different wires in and out of to switch modes. So I don't have the right plug and they're sort of annoying to get. So I printed off this old data sheet for this microphone. This one's from 2003. And it lists the part number for the plug element as RK169P. That's not a part you're going to be able to get easily. This part number isn't even listed in the current version of the data sheet. Sure doesn't sell this part on their website. And if you go looking for it, you're just not gonna find it. So how do you fix this microphone's plug when you can't buy the right part number? We have a few options. Option one is to just buy the right part. I got in contact with Sure and asked them how to buy this. They told me the RK169P is obsolete and they gave me a new part number, which I'm going to show you on the screen right now. They said in order to buy that new part, you have to call up their parts department and order over the phone. Their part department is not 24 seven and I have no idea what it costs. So I just don't wanna do that. So what are the other options? Option two is to just go buy some generic plugs and to make them work. So I bought these plugs from China. I think it was about five bucks for 10 of them. I had to make sure these were the plugs that had the set screws inlaid directly in them because I'm missing the set screw and it needs to come up from the bottom, not go down from the top. Another thing to be aware of on these plugs is that while they do have a set screw, they don't screw into the body of the microphone like this diagram implies. Instead, as you unscrew them, this little nub sticks out and then that hooks into the hole. On this particular microphone, there's a threaded hole and a wider regular hole. And this set screw is going to pop up through this regular hole this threaded hole won't fit this set screw and also it is at the wrong position so that if you were to try to use that hole the pins would be sticking out the end of the back of the microphone which is not what you want it shouldn't be too hard to make these parts work but the next issue is that this microphone has the selectable impedance socket on it and this socket needs to be able to fit on these pins which it does not option number one is to cut these little sockets off solder directly to the pins which is very straightforward and easy the issue is that if i want to change impedance later i'm going to have to desolder and resolder to the right wire right here so soldering it will work just fine you're just missing the entire point of this microphone option two is i'm either going to have to shave down these little pins here or extend them out with something that's the right diameter that i can plug the sockets into so then the question becomes what is the best way to extend out these little pins here the most obvious choice i thought was to use these male header pins that i use on circuit boards I have a whole lot of them on hand and they're very easy to get. The issue is that these pins are actually too small to make good contact. So rather than order new pins that would work better, I just wound up looking around to see what I have. The best thing I have on hand that works is this solid core 16 gauge wire. Fits in the socket just fine. It's cheap, it's common, and I think this is gonna be the way to go. So I'm going to solder little extensions onto the main two pins here. I don't think it needs to be that long because these sockets are not very long. So we're just gonna do that real fast and see how that works out. Step one before you get started is to make sure that these wires are actually here. There's a red and a white going to a little two pin socket here. And then there's a blue and a black connected together to one contact. You'd better hope the wires are there because if you look in, everything is potted together. So if you need to run new wires through this whole microphone, that's going to be very annoying and maybe not worth it if you're just trying to save a $3 microphone for fun. If it's anything like the SM57, you heat it up in hot water and melt it out, kind of like a hot glue kind of thing, which I don't want to do. But fortunately, the wires are here and they're good. The black wire was broken off this pin and I already soldered that back on. But other than that, I think this microphone will work if I just get a new plug on it. And if you're wondering what goes where, pin two is where the blue and black go. Pin three is where you select between the white and red wires. Looking inside it, there's the Unisphere 1 capsule. That is a predecessor to the Unidyne 3 capsule in the SM58. It should sound pretty similar to an SM58, but not quite the same. On this microphone, the foam has started to degrade on top of the capsule, so hopefully that doesn't affect how it sounds too much. The foam inside of this grill is fine though. Now to get at the back of the capsule, I just unscrew it like that. I'll check the wiring on the back side of the capsule and it looks okay. You can see down inside the transformer and the back of the switch. So I think the only issue is gonna be the plug. But the only way to know for sure is to get a plug on here, test it out and see what happens. Before we extend these pins out, I'm gonna follow this wiring diagram and connect pin one to the chassis ground because it's gonna be a little bit easier to do that before these pins kind of get in the way. To do that, I'm just gonna use this little leg of a resistor. It doesn't really matter what you use, just make sure there's not a bunch of loose strands kind of flopping around that might short things out. I 
strength-wise, that's pretty close. Yeah, that'll probably do it. Um, before I forget, since I fixed these blue and black wires, I'm just gonna put on a bit of heat shrink tubing to help make sure we don't short it out. Yeah, that ought to do it. All right, let's let that cool down. So we're going to plug red into pin three, which is low, and the blue-black into pin two. Although since pin two isn't exchangeable, you could probably just solder pin two down without really losing anything. It looks a little bit kludgy, but that's okay, because as long as it fits in there, nobody's gonna have to see our handiwork. Hopefully, it actually does fit in there. Okay, there we go. Just tighten that down, or tighten it up, as it were. Make sure everything's there, and yeah, we should be good to go. Time to plug it in, finally, give it a test, and see how it works. Here I'm talking to the microphone, it definitely works, because I have no reason to doubt that it did, and I have complete confidence in myself. And I believe in myself, and I believe in you. And uh, this was a really easy fix, so... Now, I don't know if this sounds 100% like it would when it was new, since the foam is degrading, but I think it should be mostly okay. I'll be testing out the high impedance mode later. I don't know what I'll do with it, but I'm pretty curious to find out how it works and if it works. Let's see how the switch works. So I'll just do it, and yeah, it seems fine. And I can talk into the side of the microphone and into the back of the microphone. You guys like that, right? You like it when we talk into different parts of the microphone. So if you got anything out of this video, be sure to like and subscribe and to hype up this video to help me rocket up the leaderboards, whatever that means. I've been Sparkyo, and I'll see you next time. Oh, and also if you have notifications on, uh, you might want to go in and set notifications to all instead of to personalized because the algorithm will otherwise personalize me out of your feed instead of into it. That's not just for me. That's just across the board. They kind of screw with those settings. So make sure you get that worked out. I've been Sparkyo, and I'll see you next time.